Hi, this is Emily Taylor. I'm the associate producer for EverQuest 2, and welcome to the Age of Discovery beta tour. So the Age of Discovery is a very feature-rich expansion, and rather than having a lot of new zones, we focus on added gameplay and new mechanics, so this is going to be a very hands-on tour. We'll give you a chance to look at the new Beast Lord class, and then we'll head back to Freeport to hire some mercenaries. Finally, we'll look into the Dungeon Maker tool, and we'll learn how players can create and share their own dungeons. So if everyone's logged in, you should find that you're on your Beast Lord, and we're in Everfrost right now. Beast Lords have warders that they can tame, who work in combination with the Beast Lord to create a new style of combat tactics. So the Beast Lords have fewer buttons to press, but they have a more active and reactive playstyle than our other classes as they react and interact with their warder. When you start a new Beast Lord, you have a warder already, and what species you get depends on your race, but as you travel around the world, you'll be able to tame animals from almost everywhere. So let's go ahead and tame a new warder. Um, most animals can be tamed by Beast Lords, and you get a special Beast Lord Sight ability when you start spending your AA points at level 20. You'll find that on your hotbar. It should be the first icon, and it looks like an eye. So, uh, if you do, if you use that while you're standing near an animal, you should see that the animal will glow with a special effect, and that means that it's tameable. Uh, the second ability we've put in your hotbar is your Tame Warder ability. So to do that, you engage the animal in combat. When the animal is below 50% health, then you use your Tame Warder ability. So there are in total 16 different families of warders, for example, the cat family, the bird family, the canine family, etc. Each of them has slightly different offensive and defensive abilities, so you can figure out what suits you best. So Beast Lords are a class that players have been asking for since the game launched, and we're very excited to be bringing them back to Norath at last. And we've tried to make it a unique gameplay experience as well, with a lot more interactive elements between the Beast Lord and the Warder than our other classes have. Uh, we're fully supporting the Beast Lords by adding in all the class quests, class armor, even an epic quest, just like the other classes have. Welcome to Freeport. New improved Freeport. Uh, we've completely revamped the city. We've converted it from four separate zones into just one, as well as upgrading the appearance. But besides the visual improvements to Freeport, we've added a ton of new quest lines and lore for all of the evil races and classes. And these can be done from level one through 90. And since the game will be fully free to play when this content launches, you won't even have to spend a single cent to enjoy the new Freeport. Now you can see up here, this is the Overlord Citadel. On live servers in Freeport right now, it's crashed into the ground about where we're standing. So once Age of Discovery launches, you'll see that the Citadel's been restored to the sky overhead. It's also now accompanied by some smaller guard towers, which didn't exist previously. Where we're standing now is the Execution Plaza. Here you'll see regular executions of those who Lucan has judged to be traitors to the city. Lucan often shows up and carries out the executions himself, and there's one starting now if you want to take a moment to watch. And in case you're wondering, if you jump in that pit yourself, yes, you will die. This is the Overlord's Plaza. This didn't exist in uh, the original Freeport, so this is a pretty cool monument. Um, clearly, nothing says, I'm back and I'm taking control like a 20-foot tall golden statue of yourself. So the revamp of Freeport includes a ton of new quests, including different quest lines for different races and class archetypes. Many of the quest chains also scale dynamically to your level, so even if you're already level 90, you can still enjoy them. And we've preserved a lot of the older content as well, although some of the older quests have had to be tweaked to match the city's changes. The old racial neighborhoods have been turned into instance quest zones, so you'll visit those while you're doing your quests. And there's also a new public quest outside Freeport in the Common Lands, which is for levels 20 to 30. So let's head over to the Seafarer's Roost Inn, which is where we'll meet our new mercenaries. Okay, here we are at the harbor. You can see the tents over at the right. That's new. Um, there is sort of a commercial area where you should find the banker, the broker, the mender. You'll also find the new reforging merchant there. And here at the Seafarer's Roost Inn, you'll find the mercenaries hanging out. So mercenaries are another cool feature coming with the Age of Discovery. They are hired hands that you can pay to help you fight, they act like a group member, and they'll take up a group slot in your party. They also demand a share of the loot, and you have to pay them a regular salary or they will quit. But they're a great option if you need a little extra help to run that one quest, or if your group just can't find that last person to run a dungeon. They can even join raids. Mercenaries come in five general categories. Tanks, healers, melee DPS, caster DPS, and support. And you'll see they have a unique icon over their head that should indicate their role. We've got one mercenary standing out front of the inn here. And if we go inside, there's a healer just around here behind the ogre, uh, and a few more out the back. 
Now, each mercenary is a unique character with unique abilities, so the healer here in Freeport is not necessarily the same as a healer from another place. Uh, you might find that one healer specializes in heal over times, so the other specializes in instant heals, maybe one has a better res, maybe another does more damage. So it's worth investigating the different mercenaries to find the one that suits you best. There are some mercenaries that will be based in Freeport and in Kinos. There are others you'll meet out in the world. Once you've hired a mercenary for the first time, after that you'll be able to visit Freeport or Kinos to hire them again, regardless of where you originally met them. In addition to these normal mercenaries, there are a few rare mercenaries, which very rarely you may encounter. You'll find these out in the world. These are extra powerful mercenaries, and they have a cost to match, and they'll stay with you for only a limited time before they leave. But they are extra cool and extra powerful, and while you do have them, you're going to kick some serious butt. All right, now on to our final stop. Let's take a quick look at Dungeon Maker. So, to access your dungeon, open your Persona window again, that was the C button, and you'll also notice you've got a new tab there called Dungeons. Click on Dungeons, and in here there's a button where you can create a new dungeon, or if you're a trustee of someone else's dungeon, that will be listed in this list as well. And when you've created a few dungeons, you'll see this list is filled up. There's several themes to choose from. For example, you probably saw on the list there's Mistmore, uh, Crushbone, and the Lair of Scale. And within each theme, there are several different room layouts which you can choose from. So this should give people a good variety of options to choose from when you're planning your dungeon. This is obviously based on the vampire castle Mistmore in Loping Plains. As you're probably aware, Dungeon Maker is a really exciting new tool that allows you to actually create and publish dungeons so that other people can fight through to win rewards. This is a groundbreaking feature, and we think it's going to be a huge hit, and we're very excited to see what the players in beta are doing with it already. You get rewards both as a builder of the dungeons and as a player, which makes this an exciting way to show off your creative skills. You'll probably notice you have a new window pop up on your screen called a toolbox. This is where you'll find your monster spawners, your effect objects, and decorations that you can put in your dungeon. Monster spawners are what they sound like, they will make monsters appear. Effect objects add effects to the monsters that they are placed near. So, for example, if you want to place a spawner now, and then select an effect object and place it near your monster, if you click on the object that you just placed, the effect object, it should tell you that it adds a buff, or it enhances some ability of the monsters that are near it. Some examples of effects might be um, adds a chance for every monster in, near the effect object to proc lightning damage when they attack, or increases the awareness radius so that they will call for help for monsters farther away than they would have otherwise, or increases the max health. So there are a lot of effects like that, and by choosing which ones you want, you should be able to customize each monster. The third category is the decorations. Decorations don't have any gameplay effect, they're just to make your dungeon look interesting. They include virtual items, which don't physically exist in your inventory, you'll only find them in your toolbox, and normal house items like carpenters make. And you can earn the spawners, the effect objects, and the virtual decorations in a number of ways, including through running dungeons or building dungeons and earning tokens that would let you buy more. Now you'll notice that the toolbox has a publish button at the top. Once you finish decorating your dungeon, this button allows you to publish the dungeon so that other players can enter and fight through it. And dungeon makers will receive reward tokens when players finish playing through their dungeon, and players also receive reward tokens for going through the dungeon. The tokens can be spent on a wide variety of things, including the dungeon maker spawners and objects, as I mentioned, also gear. There's some pretty cool stuff coming up. So that's the basic idea of Dungeon Maker. If you want to hop in and run through a dungeon, you can click on your EverQuest 2 menu, that's the EQ2 button, and there's now a dungeon leaderboards option. If you click on that, you'll see all of the dungeons that people have published. So just pick one and go into it. When you zone in, you'll notice that you have a dialog box listing a number of adventurers you can choose. When you're fighting through a Dungeon Maker dungeon, you don't fight as yourself at this point. You choose an adventurer to fight as. So right now, you've got about four or five options to choose from. When this goes live, you'll be able to unlock more. You'll be able to obtain them in a variety of ways. And you can choose. Each one has different abilities, so you can choose which one suits you best. On the right of your screen, you can see the group window to show you what all of your group mates have selected if you're running through the dungeon in a group. And that way, you can choose your adventurer to suit what they've chosen. You don't need a group to run through a Dungeon Maker dungeon. It is optional. You can have as many or as few people as you like, but of course, it's quite fun to run as a group. 
I'll just touch briefly on some other new features with the Age of Discovery. We also have the Trade Skill Apprentice system, which allows trade skillers to mentor an NPC and gain new recipes and get new quests from them. There's also the reforging system, which I mentioned briefly earlier, that allows you to reconfigure the stats on items of your equipment. And you can also add exciting new particle effects to your weapons. Thanks for joining the tour. We think these features are a ton of fun, and we hope that you're as excited as we are to join us in the Age of Discovery. Sony.